So fortunately for us, the only thing that we have to do is log in. And all that the login entails is finding the user and checking if the password is correct. And the way that we're gonna do that is number one, we're going to use two things. We're going to use the user manager and the sign in manager. So we're going to be utilizing both of them. User manager is going to be what we use to find the user and the sign in manager is what we're going to use to check the password. Uh, pretty easy to understand. I don't think you guys are gonna have any trouble. So let's just go ahead, let's dive into the account controller and let's go ahead and make our login. So I'm gonna say HTTP uh, post and this is going to be a login. And remember it's post because we're creating data. We are going to create a user. We're gonna go down here. Of course, we're going to make this async. Why would we not? I'm gonna say I action result. Going to call this login and we are going to pass it a login DTO, which we have not created yet, but we can create it very quickly. So I'm gonna say login DTO and go down here. I'm gonna go ahead and create the function. So let me see here. First thing that I'm gonna do is go to the account and just go to new C sharp class and we'll call this login DTO. And the login DTO, you guessed it, is going to have a username and a password pretty simple, but we still need to make a DTO because we're going to have to apply data annotations to this. So I'm gonna say public string username. And we're gonna say get set. And then I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna say required, going to say public string password. I'm going to say get set looks good then we can go back into our account controller and i think it already found it so um if it didn't find it we can go back and change it but it looks like it found it so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the model state because we had to pass a complex dto we had to pass a complex type in here and the model state is going to check that for us so i'm going to say model state is valid and if it is not valid you guessed it we will return bad request so I'm gonna say uh, bad request and we'll pass in the model state. And now what we need to do is we're going to find the user. Remember back on the whiteboard, I said one of the things that we had to do is we have to find the user. And the way that we're going to find that user is we're going to use our user manager, which we've already brought in. It's going to have a property for us that will automatically make it so that we can get the user and we don't have to go in our application DB context. I'm going to say for first or default X, and we're gonna find it by the username. You could do you could do email if you want to, but I'm gonna say username. So I'm gonna log in by username and say x dot username. And we're going to check uh, here to make sure that it is indeed the username. And we are going to to lowercase it. That looks good. So here we're going to check if we have. So if it did find the user, so if user or if it didn't find the user. We're going to check and say return unauthorized. So if there is no user, we can say invalid username. Invalid user name. And I'm gonna lowercase that. I think that I'm going to put an exclamation mark. I think it makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sign-in manager and we don't have, Let's make sure we don't we don't have the sign-in manager, so we need to bring it in. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to say sign-in manager, and I'm going to pass in the app user. And I'm going to say sign-in manager. Then I'm gonna go up here, I'm going to bring it in through private read only. Sign-in manager. So I'm going to say sign-in manager. Then pass in the app user and go here sign in manager. okay so now we have the sign in manager sign in manager is going to be asynchronous i'm going to say sign in manager dot check password async go ahead pass in the user and we're going to pass in the password so log in dto we're going to pass it in straight from the dto and we are going to say false for let me see here so we're going to say false go ahead check to see the bool is going to be lockout on failure. So we're not going, if you 
actually turn this to true or you leave it without locking on failure or lock out on failure, you're going to get lots of issues in terms of it, like I said, locking you out and it's going to be pretty annoying. So if you want to wrestle with the lockout failure, which a lot of people get hung up on, you can go ahead, feel free to pass true in there. But if you just want to turn it off, I think it's probably better just to turn it off in this case. Okay, so I'm going to say it. So if it did not log in successfully, so result dot succeeded. So if it did not uh, log in successful, we want to return unauthorized. And we'll say username. We will say username not found and or password incorrect. We don't want to explicitly tell them because that could be uh, make it easier on them if they are hackers. So next thing I'm going to go down, I'm going to say return and we're going to return our user and we're going to do so in the form of a DTO or just use the new user DTO that we created before. So say new dot new user DTO going to go down here go ahead I'm going to put a semicolon right here I'm going to say username so username is equal to user dot username is equal to email is equal to user dot email and say token is equal to token service and we're going to go ahead and create our token and then we're going to pass it to the user and it will do everything for us. Okay, so that is pretty much looking good to go. I don't think that there's anything else that we need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead CD within my API. I'm gonna go .NET watch run. Okay, looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and register a new user. I'm gonna call this username and I'll call this investor investor 111 I'm going to do the same thing for the email so investor 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 111 and I'm going to give it a password password 111 maybe add an exclamation mark there just for good luck okay that looks good so let's go ahead let's test out our login Okay, and I'm going to go investor, investor 111. Then I'm going to go password, password, underscore 111. Go ahead, execute, and that is looking good. So the last thing that we need to do, or the I guess it would be the next thing that we need to do is... We need to go ahead and set up Swagger so that we can go ahead and get everything uh, set up so that we can test with Swagger very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link down below and this is going to have the add Swagger gen or this is going to be just some code that you can copy and paste directly into your program.cs file so that your uh, Swagger will have JWT built into it and you don't have to mess with it all this all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into my builder.services and right under builder.swaggergen, I'm going to go into here and add Swagger Gen, and we're going to add the JWT to it so that we can see it. We can actually see it and go ahead. So everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and do a cold restart. And now we have our authorize right here so that we can go ahead and we can just paste our JWT into it. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go ahead and log in again. So investor, investor, 111. Say pass word underscore 111 and an exclamation mark. That looks good. Go ahead, grab our token right here. So go ahead, grab this. Then I'm gonna go up into here and paste it within the bear amount. Then let's go ahead, let's test out one of our stock controllers. So let's go ahead and just test out the get all and add an authorize to make sure that 
it is indeed authorizing us correctly. So go ahead, make sure you've got your authorized loader dot, make sure you got your post and go down, go here, not going to put any type of parameters in it. I'm just gonna go ahead, click execute and we are good to go. So just, just make sure that you are, you've locked down an API endpoint You've got your beer loaded into the actual swagger. You're not using any type of params. I guess you could use params and then you go ahead and hit execute and you should get something back. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.